Plants don't have an immune system like we do, but that doesn't mean they're defenseless. Poison, thors and mimicry are all protection against things like animals and diseases. Today we're going to look at how these defences work and look at some others. Make the most of this video and your revision time with my study along workbook. It's got loads of tasks to complete while you watch and exam questions to test what you've learnt. The link is in the description below or head over to emmabitici.com. Plant defences can be split into three groups, physical, chemical and mechanical. Let's start with physical defences. Plants have a cellulose cell wall that makes it harder for pathogens to enter the cells. The leaves can have a tough waxy cuticle that acts as an additional barrier to pathogens. Trees have a thick bark and plants without this have layers of dead cells around the stem. This is an extra layer of protection and it helps remove pathogens when the dead cells are shed or the bark falls off. Now let's look at chemical defences. Many plants produce antimicrobial chemicals that can protect them against pathogens. In the developing drugs video, we saw that chemicals from plants form the basis of many traditional medicines based on this property. Some plants produce poisons, for example foxgloves and nettles. This deters herbivores from eating them. Herbivores include large animals like cows and smaller animals like insects. If the animal feels unwell or ill after eating the plant, then it's unlikely to eat the same type of plant again. Now we'll look at mechanical defences. Hairs, like the ones you see on nettle leaves, and thorns, like the ones you see on rose plant stems, deter animals from eating the plant by hurting them. Additionally, insects find it harder to lay eggs on plants if they've got hairs on the leaves. Mimicry is something that's used to trick animals. The plant copies something to make it appear off-putting. For example, the passion flower vine has evolved to have small yellow spots on its leaves. These look like butterfly eggs. This deters butterflies from laying eggs on the leaves, as it appears there will be more competition from other caterpillars when the eggs hatch. The butterflies will lay their eggs on different plant leaves, reducing damage to the passion flower vine. And finally, leaves that can drip or curl when touched can scare animals away and also cause insects to fall off or fly away from the plant. Okay, that's it. Let's test what you've learnt. Pause the video and try these quick questions. And when you're done, just press play to go over the answers. 1. State the three physical defences that plants have against pathogens. As the question says state, we don't need to describe them. So we've got cellulose cell walls, bark or a layer of dead cells around the stem, and a tough waxy cuticle on the leaves. 2. Describe the defence adaptations of this gorse bush and name the type of organisms it defends against. So let's take a look. Hopefully you can spot that it's got thorns. And we'll start our answer by describing this adaptation. It has thorns, which are protrusions from the stem, which just means it sticks out, shaped with a sharp point to hurt larger animals that try to eat them. For example, cows, sheep and rabbits. This deters the animals from eating the gorse bush. Note that you cannot say it deters insects or pathogens as thorns don't hurt them. They only deter large herbivores. So, how did you do on the questions? Well done on finishing the infection and response topic. I really hope it's helped you revise. If you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe by hitting that big red button down below. Thank you for watching and bye.